Hello, I'm David Boehner, professor in the Department of Emergency Medicine, ultrasound director at The Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center and The Ohio State University College of Medicine. This video introduces a framework for using and applying ultrasound in a clinical medical setting. This model we've developed here at Ohio State is IAIM, an acronym which stands for I for indications, A for acquisition, I for interpretation, and M for medical decision making. This tutorial is designed for the novice ultrasonologist who has either limited or no prior experience using ultrasound. After a very brief discussion of the physics of ultrasound and how ultrasound works, Prashant Swamy, a future emergency medicine physician, will guide you through the using the IA model. How does ultrasound work? While well, imaging modalities such as X-ray, CT, and MRI use sensors to record different waves from along the electromagnetic spectrum to form an image, ultrasound uses mechanical waves. Human hearing can detect mechanical or sound waves along the 20 to 20,000 hertz spectrum. Ultrasound uses mechanical waves with frequencies in the megahertz range. Remember that mega simply means 10 to the 6. The probe receives an electrical signal from the ultrasound machine and uses piezoelectric crystals to turn the electrical energy into mechanical waves as ultrasound. The waves are propagated into any medium the probe is applied to, in our case, a patient. The compositions of tissues within the body reflect ultrasound waves differently. The probe receives the reflected ultrasound waves and again, by way of the piezoelectric crystal, turns the ultrasound waves into electrical energy that the ultrasound machine translates into an image that we see on the screen. The grayscale is simply three various colors, black, gray, and white. Black is going to be no echoes or anechoic. Those are going to be things such as fluid or artifact. Gray is going to be hypoechoic or low amounts of echoes. Those are things such as soft tissue. And white is going to be hyperechoic or lots of echoes. And those things are going to be either dense structures such as bone or fascia or air with its properties that the molecules are spread apart and it's a strong attenuator, a strong reflector, and thus appears white. So the grayscale is three colors, black, gray, and white, anechoic, black, gray, hypoechoic, and white, hyperechoic. There are many resources for further information on the physics of ultrasound. Here you'll find a video series created by another past Ohio State University student. Now I'll turn it over to Prashant for a run-through of the IA model. I'm Prashant Swamy, currently a fourth year medical student at Ohio State University College of Medicine going into emergency medicine. Let's begin with the indications for ultrasound in the medical setting. Ultrasound can be used to image nearly all of the human body, providing an invaluable tool for a variety of medical specialties. There are two types of ultrasound exams. Comprehensive exams are normally performed by sonographers and read by radiologists, or in the case of echocardiograms, by cardiologists. Another managing physician will use the interpretation along with clinical context to help guide medical care. These exams will obtain many images and videos to fully interrogate whatever organ or structure is being examined to allow for later viewing and interpretation by a physician. For example, a right upper quadrant ultrasound may be obtained for assessment of the liver, gallbladder, and bile duct without specifically asking for the presence or absence of any particular clinical finding. The second type of exam is focused exams. In contrast, focused ultrasound exams are performed bedside by a physician who is an ultrasonologist. The same person is acquiring and interpreting the image as well as using the interpretation for guiding medical care. The physician doing all of this will be looking to answer specific, often yes or no questions. Is there a pericardial effusion? Is there uninterrupted sliding of the lung pleura? Is there retinal detachment? Common examples of when ultrasound use is indicated in, is in trauma patients, in pregnancy, and for direct visual aid for minimally invasive procedures. Specifically in emergency medicine, the American College of Emergency Physicians has approved a policy statement dictating 11 core applications of ultrasound in the emergent setting. Other specialties, say OB-GYN, have other indications such as evaluation of congenital defects in a fetus. Ultrasound can be used to help with a variety of procedures, including line placement, joint injections, and fluid drainage, such as para- or thoracentesis. Further discussion of indications will be saved for other videos, as the purpose of this tutorial is to provide an overview of the use of an ultrasound machine and interpretation of images, regardless of the indication. Let's move onward to A for acquisition. The proper way to acquire the image can be remembered by using the four Ps. P 
patient, probe, picture, and protocol. Patient. Aside from the fast scan, which is done in the time-critical setting of trauma patients, take a moment to situate your patient to provide the best positioning for the scan you plan to perform. For many scans such as echocardiography, this may be with the patient supine or maybe with the patient sitting such as for the ultrasound of the shoulder. Gown and drape the patient appropriately and have easy access to towels for cleaning up after you scan. Probe. Different probes can be used depending on what is being imaged. The most common probes are curvilinear, linear, phased array, and endoluminal. Each probe has a handle a probe head containing the piezoelectric crystals and a transducer surface. There is always a marker on one side of the probe designating the leading edge, which corresponds to a marker on the image to allow for correct interpretation of the image. This marker on the probe is traditionally placed to the patient's right or to the patient's head. Gel is used as a medium to transduce ultrasound waves. Use your hand to stabilize a probe on the patient. The curvilinear probe transmits between 2 to 5 MHz frequency. It's characterized by low resolution but high penetrance. It gives a pie-shaped image and is typically used for abdominal imaging. The phased array probe transmits at 1 to 5 MHz frequency. It's characterized by moderate resolution and moderate penetrance. It gives a pie-shaped image with a narrower point than the curvilinear probe. It's typically used for echocardiograms and imaging between rib spaces, given its small footprint. When a curvilinear probe is not available, it can be used for abdominal applications as well, such as the fast scan. However, as the footprint of the probe is smaller, it gives a less complete view of structures close to the probe. The linear probe transmits between 6 and 13 megahertz frequency. It's characterized by high resolution and low penetrance. It gives a rectangular image and typically used for musculoskeletal imaging, eye orbit imaging, lung pleura imaging, and ultrasound guided procedures. The endoluminal probe transmits at 5 to 8 megahertz frequency. It's characterized by moderate resolution and moderate penetrance. It gives a semicircular image and is typically used for intraoral imaging and transvaginal imaging. There are two categories of probe movements, macro movements and micro movements. Macro movements are done to locate the organ or tissue of interest and micro movements are done to center the organ or tissue of interest on the screen. We use standardized terms to define various probe movements. Slides are done along the plane of the image. Sweeps are done perpendicular to the plane of the image. Other movements consist of rocking, fanning, and rotating. Knobology. Once the tissue of interest has been identified, the image should be optimized by adjusting different parameters on the machine. The image should speak for itself, being of good enough image quality that the structure being viewed is identifiable. Labels or pictographs should be used to help fully understand where the image was obtained, such as the left or right side of the patient. I will now cover very basic need-to-know knobology. Depth. Increasing the depth allows for visualization of deeper structures. The proper depth setting is usually determined by what structure is being imaged and which probe is being used. Gain. Increasing the gain will amplify the reflected signal and effectively make everything brighter. The downside is that this will increase noise as well as signal. Text and pictographs. These are used to label images to help yourself and others when viewing saved images. It may be impossible to determine if an image is of the left or right kidney if no label is provided. Save. Different machines have different buttons or methods to save images in clips or videos, but the idea is the same. 
Save images for documentation and for viewing by yourself and other providers at a later time. The final P of acquisition is protocol. The specific protocol will depend on the type of scan being performed. Machine settings will vary depending on the type of scan. For example, the fast scan requires a curvilinear probe with the machine set to the abdominal setting, with proper depth and gain settings depending on the site being imaged. Finally, the images or clips must be saved properly. The second I in I-AIM stands for interpretation. A systematic approach is required to accurately interpret images. It will take time to master the relevant anatomy and to feel comfortable with the appearance of the wide range of structures imaged on ultrasound. For now, I will cover the basics of ultrasound images, regardless of the probe or structure being examined. There are four sides to every ultrasound image. Near field, far field, leading edge, and receding edge. The near field is the top of the screen and represents the structures closest to the probe. The far field is at the bottom of the screen and represents structures most distant from the probe. Again, the depth of the image can be changed using the depth knob. Each probe is labeled or etched on one side to indicate the leading edge. This is represented on the screen by a dot or logo to help orient the user. Typically, the leading edge on the probe is placed to the right or to the head of the patient. The leading edge indicator on the screen is usually on the upper left corner of the image. This results in axial images as being viewed from the foot of the patient, like CT images. Sagittal images are viewed from the right side of the patient. There are exceptions to this rule, including cardiac imaging and ultrasound guided procedures. The fourth side of the ultrasound image is the receding edge. The receding edge will be opposite from the leading edge. A basic principle of ultrasound interpretation is to understand relative echogenicities of different structures. As a basic rule of thumb, fluids will be anechoic or black. Air, such as bowel gas and bone, will be hyperechoic or white. Tissues and organs will fall in between this spectrum and will be of varying shades of gray. Landmarks. The ultrasonographer must have a competent understanding of anatomy in order to obtain usable images. When first learning to interpret images, look for structures that are easily recognizable, which can allow for deduction of surrounding structures. Practicing on standardized patients and healthy models will help you to learn normal anatomy so that abnormal anatomy will be more easily recognized in real patients. Understanding the protocol of different scans will help with the recognition of specific views and direct attention to what structures or potential findings are being investigated in that image. Modes. The ultrasound machine provides different modes to further characterize and analyze the structures being investigated. 2D, also known as B mode, is the default imaging mode. Other modes include Doppler. This allows the user to assess the waveform and velocity of vascular flow along a single scan line. This allows the user to determine if an anechoic structure has vascular flow in order to differentiate vessels from other fluid-filled cavities. Color Doppler. Velocity and direction of flow are depicted on a color map of a 2D image. Blue indicates flow directed into the screen. Red indicates flow directed out of the screen. Rem remember that these colors do not correspond with arterial or venous flow. M mode, or motion mode. This mode plots a single scan line of a 2D image over time, allowing the user to further characterize the motion of structures along the line of interrogation over time. This can be useful, for example, when assessing pleural sliding. A full explanation of these modes is beyond the scope of this lecture. The M in the IA model stands for medical decision making. This consists of putting together the clinical context, pretest, post-test probability, image analysis, and physician interpretation to guide medical decision making. In terms of clinical context, the images and videos must have been obtained to answer a focus question. They must be correlated with the entire patient's clinical picture, including history, physical exam, vital signs, etc. When applying the use of ultrasound images in decision making, the pretest and post-test probabilities should also be considered. If clinical suspicion is high for a certain disorder, an ultrasound is known to be highly sensitive and specific for findings consistent with that disorder, 
the ultrasound may be all that is needed to confirm diagnosis. In other cases, ultrasound may be more of a screening tool where positive findings are sufficient for confirming a diagnosis, but absence of findings will require further definitive imaging, say with a CT scan. Additionally, the physician must first establish whether the images and video obtained are technically sound and, adequate, and adequately answer the clinical question. For example, a FAST scan looking for free fluid in the abdomen can be negative for free fluid, positive for free fluid, or indeterminate if the necessary views were unable to be obtained. The last step is physician interpretation, which uses physician judgment combined with clinical context and pretest and post-test probability, as previously mentioned, to guide medical decision making. Thanks for watching. We hope that this video will provide foundational knowledge to help kick off your ultrasound training. There are many resources for learning more about using ultrasound, and here are some that we think you may find useful.